Here at the University of North Texas Speech and Hearing Center, we do research for um, clinical populations and we also serve them in the clinic to test hearing and do hearing evaluations and fit hearing instruments. How are you doing today? I'm good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Another part of mainly my job is to do research on this hearing technology to see whether or not it's beneficial to adults and children with hearing loss, as well as optimizing um, the different hearing technologies to get the most benefit that a person can out of it. We look forward to any new technologies that arise in remote microphone technology because it is critical for children with hearing loss to have an improved signal to noise ratio in the classroom. So we, we look forward to advancements that'll provide even greater improvements to children um, and advanced signal processing that can really address those negative effects of noise and distance and reverberation. Hi ladies, thanks so much for coming in today. I really appreciate you guys participating in the study. Thanks so much, just come on back and we'll get started. I have had hearing aids since I was four. I have a neural loss and I'm constantly frustrated by not being able to hear and communicate what I'm trying to say. It's hard for me to engage with my friends and be involved with my family. In school, it's hard for me to hear with a hearing loss and I'm unable to contact or be contacted so when my teacher asks me a question, I don't really know if she's talking to me or I really don't know what's going on around me. So it's really hard for me to keep up with the pack. Children with hearing loss have significant problems hearing in background noise and most classrooms are very noisy places. And so these children have difficulty hearing because they have a damaged auditory system that we can't just repair, we can't just fix with amplification. So they're very impacted by that background noise and they require a signal that's 10 to 20 dB louder than their peers to perform similarly on speech recognition tasks. And so we really need to address this difficulty for the children and the technology that we provide for them. So most recently, we've conducted a study on a new remote microphone technology known as Voice Priority Eye, works in Oticon hearing instruments when used with an FM system. These FM systems that we included in the study include a microphone worn by the primary talker, and typically they're used in a classroom, so that would be the teacher. And then the children wear a receiver on their hearing instrument where the signal from the transmitter can be sent directly to the child's ear through his or her hearing instrument. We were interested in evaluating the potential benefit of voice priority I and FM systems for children because it is a new and different technology because it adjusts the FM emphasis at the child's ear. And so it may provide different benefit than a traditional fixed gain FM system that picks one level or one level of FM emphasis to the listener versus voice priority I, which is adaptive in nature. So if it's a very noisy environment, it can provide more FM emphasis. If it's a less noisy environment, you would get less FM emphasis. And so what this does is really individualizes the FM emphasis for the child so that you know they're performing at their optimal level wherever they're seated in the classroom, whether they have you know more localized noise around them or whether it's more diffuse or uniform in nature. Either way, the child would be receiving an appropriate signal to noise ratio. We included a trial period with the FM system with voice priority I activated so that the children could adjust to the FM system, really get a sense for how it sounded and to use it in various environments. During the trial period, this, the children were asked to use the equipment for about four weeks and we asked them to use the FM system for a minimum of two hours a day and we felt this was a good amount of time to give them a sense of how it might be helpful and to use it in various environments as well. 
For the remainder of the day, we ask them to use the Otakon Sensei hearing instruments that we loan to them during the trial period. So they were either using the FM or the Sensei instruments during that, that four week period. After the trial period, the children reported that they used it in a lot of different environments. Some were kind of surprising to me even. I like to ride horses, and my riding instructor is teaching me how to rope. And so whenever we were riding, it, she could speak into it. And then if we were far away, it's really dangerous and there's a lot of sound. So when it di went directly to my ears, I could hear. And then I felt safer. So it, it helped a lot. And then we had children using it, of course, in the car, at school, in the classroom, um, in noisy restaurants and noisy social, social situations. Even in one-on-one -on -one situations, they reported it was helpful. So a lot of different environments where they utilize the FM system with voice prior priority activated. We had them fill out questionnaires and, and based on the results of those questionnaires, um, parents and children reported significant benefit in social situations, even in quiet situations, certainly in noisy and other social situations. And then also when using media, a lot of the children really enjoyed using the FM system which provided binaural music input. So we know kids like to listen to their music and they enjoyed having that clear input of their media players, I'm sure, and gaming devices. <laughs> All right, right in here. Very good. We had several behavioral measures that we included in the study, and, and the first one, and probably the most traditional one included in FM system research, was the speech recognition and noise. I want you to just repeat the sentences that you hear coming from your FM system, okay? We conducted this measure in a classroom to try to simulate a realistic listening environment. And the children were seated in the middle of the classroom and the primary signal or talker was directly in front of them and it was a loudspeaker just at zero degrees. And then we had classroom noise come out of four other speakers. And those speakers were either diffuse in nature or uniform noise in the four corners of the room or it was more localized noise presented on either side of the child and directly kind of back to the sides. So it was, it was pretty noisy for them and a more challenging uh, arrangement, we, we hypothesized anyway. The driver started the car. The driver started the car. When we analyzed the data from this test arrangement, the voice priority eye provided significantly greater benefit than that traditional fixed gain, which makes sense because it was adjusted for what the child needed at his or her ear. So it needed higher emphasis at a higher noise level, and that's what the voice priority eye was able to provide relative to the fixed gain FM. So we saw this benefit at the highest noise levels. Um, it was the most notable difference between the fixed gain and um, the voice priority eye the ever-changing interplay of form and color. Another behavioral testing procedure that we did in this study was called the SIR, the Speech Intelligibility Ratings. We asked the children to provide ratings on a scale from 0%, hearing nothing at all, to 100%, hearing all of a passage, so that we could understand whether or not there would be differences between the hearing instrument alone and the FM system conditions. Fabled site of the shootout at the old 90%. 90? Oh, wow. Okay, great. We tested them in three t conditions total the Sensei hearing instrument alone, and then the traditional fixed gain FM, and then the FM system with the voice priority I. So, the first part of the procedure, we had them uh, rate the intelligibility of the hearing instrument alone, and we adjusted the background noise level to uh, rate about 50% of the passage heard. And so once we obtained that level, then we tested the two FM system conditions at that same level and compared the two. And what we found is that both of the FM settings provided equal uh, improvement. The ratings were up around 80 to 100% intelligibility relative to the 50% that we obtained with the hearing instrument alone. So both system provided similar, similar benefit.
So just give me hand signals to turn it up or down. And when it's too soft, you can say turn it up. And when it's just right, you can give me a flat hand. Yes, yes ma'am. The third procedure that we included in this study or behavioral measure was the acceptable noise level test. We thought this was really interesting to include because we hypothesized that children would accept a higher level of background noise if the signal was clearer or had a better uh, input to the child, better overall better signal to noise ratio. So we know FM systems do that. And so what we really wanted to know was, would they accept more background noise with an FM versus a hearing instrument? and then between two types of FM input. So in this procedure, the first thing you do is present running speech to the child, and we presented it directly in front of them. Now you're gonna to listen to that same story again, but this time there's gonna be background noise of several people talking at the same time now. Okay. And we adjusted it to their most comfortable level or their MCL. Once we obtain that uh, input level, we maintain at the MCL level, and continued to present the running speech and turned on background noise and a second loudspeaker directly behind them. We adjusted that background noise to um, a level that they were willing to put up with or tolerate for a long period of time. And when you subtract the MCL from the background noise level, the BNL, you obtain your ANL, so your acceptable noise level. So um, the closer, the smaller the number, the better on a &L. So that tells you they're willing to tolerate more background noise. So what we found when we compared hearing instrument alone, traditional FM, and FM with voice priority I was the best ANL occurred with the voice priority I. So they were willing to tolerate the most background noise with that system, again, because it really adjusts the FM emphasis at the child's ear. The next uh, best performance was found with the traditional FM, but it was significantly lower than what was obtained with the voice priority I. And then the lowest, um, or not lowest, but poorest ANL was obtained with the hearing instrument alone, likely because it's not uh, really improving the signal to noise ratio near to what an FM system can provide. So we thought that was a pretty interesting finding that improving the signal really will then impact the child's willingness to tolerate more background noise. The most interesting findings really came from the behavioral measures, in my opinion. So first was the speech recognition, where we found that localized noise really impacted children. That's a finding that really hasn't been shown relative to more uniform loudspeakers, which are more common in FM system research. So when using the voice priority I, children, when listening in localized noise, did significantly better than when listening with a traditional fixed gain FM system. So we certainly know that localized noise can occur in classrooms. And so I think this is an important consideration and finding in this study. And the second interesting finding was related to the ANL procedure and the fact that children were willing to tolerate or put up with higher levels of background noise when listening with voice priority I relative to the traditional fixed gain FM system and also over the hearing instrument alone. Thanks so much for your hard work. You did awesome job listening. <laughs> Based on the results of this study, I would definitely support enabling voice priority I and the software for the child because it really adjusts to the listener's needs. If it's a low level noise environment, then it'll provide an adequate uh, signal to noise ratio to the child's ear. But in a noisier environment, that FM's emphasis will automatically be increased to a level that can provide optimal performance for that child. So I would definitely enable it in any environment because it is going to adjust based on um, the measurements of noise at the child sensei hearing instrument. You want to be able to have the freedom to do what you want to do because if you've got a talent but you can't hear that, that that's a really big hesitance and so you really can't go forward because you won't understand. 
So you don't want to hide that talent. You want to free it up. And I think that's why the climb so awesome because they've helped me do a little bit more of that. So, thank you. <laughs> I really feel like the FM system levels the playing field. It enables them to hear in multiple environments. And as far as their confidence level, I think, I think parents would see a big difference. It was fun. Well, thanks. I really appreciate it. Joe, what a beautiful course. Thank you so much. <laughs> If the viewers are interested in learning more about this work, it's going to be published in the 2013 Journal of Educational Audiology.